All right. Hello, everybody. I'm David Frangioni, publisher of Modern Drummer, and welcome to All Access Hits. Today, featuring the one and only Tommy Lee. Uh, man, this is Modern Drummer history. This webinar is going to be absolutely off the charts, and I know how excited everybody is, so we're going to get into it in just one second. But first, uh, let's just talk a little biz and catch everybody up. We have the new issue of Modern Drummer, the July issue featuring Aaron Spears. Tons of great info in there. Today, we're being presented by DW and Ahead Sticks. These are the Tommy Lee model Ahead drumsticks. He actually has two different versions of his drumstick, uh, the concert and the studio. So that's something that uh, you guys definitely want to check out, and Tommy will talk more about that. Let me start right now. Okay, here we go. So we are going to talk right now about some business with one and only Tommy Lee. So before we get started, let's do some special thanks. Tommy would like to thank uh, the manufacturers that support him, uh, DW, Zildjian, Remo, Ahead, Black Magic, Chandler, Audio Technica, Rhodes, and his amazing studio, the Atrium Studio. Of course, his manager, Rick Canny, who I'd also like to personally thank from Favor the Artist Management. He's been amazing in making this happen. Tommy's team. Smiley Sean, Steve O'Morrison, Bobby Hewitt, Lindsey Martin, and Tommy, thank you for thanking Modern Drummer and Drum Channel. Today, as I said, uh, in addition to Modern Drummer presentation uh, and moderndrummer.com slash subscribe, we have a head drumsticks. Bob Kasha, thank you very much for all your support. Want to make sure we thank everybody because it takes a lot of people and a lot of hard work to make these happen, especially an event like today's. Don Lombardi, Scott Donnell at DW Drums, Bob Kasha at Ahead Drumsticks, and drumchannel.com. Thank you, Jamie Roberts from Better Noise, and uh, One Firefly and the entire Modern Drummer team. So today, I don't have to tell anybody watching this, Tommy Lee's been on the cover of Modern Drummer three times. Uh, of the thousands of emails that we've been getting, uh, a lot of people have been following Tommy's career, of course, since his first cover. Uh, we got a lot of people saying, I still have the cover with Tommy and the sticks under his chin. I still have that from, you know, when I first got it. Like, so it's, this is really an iconic moment. Uh, Tommy has a new album coming out, a new solo album called Andro on October 16th. Two of the singles have already dropped, um, which are Knock Me Down featuring Kill Vane and Tops featuring Push Push. And Tommy programmed uh, the drums on this album, and he's going to talk about that. So, of course, next year uh, the Motley Crue tour will happen, uh, the stadium tour, so we'll see him play acoustic and uh, combination of electronics then as well. And without any further delay, the one and only, please welcome to Modern Drummer All Access Hits, Tommy Lee. All right, it sounds awesome. Welcome, Tommy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me, man. Oh, it's great to have cool. you. Man, it's awesome. Hi, and in everybody fact, out there. It's, it's amazing. I want to say a special thank you from all of your fan base via Modern Drummer because we take questions from the time that we announce that we're doing these webinars. We do one a week. And so we take questions and we get lots and lots of people asking questions. But in your case, since we announced this, we got a deluge of questions, which we expected, but we got just as many people saying thank you for you to you and for Modern Drummer and for the fact that you uh, agreed to do this just for doing this and being here and offering insight and joy at this time. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you, guys. Arigato. <laughs> that's so cool, man. Wow, thanks, guys. So you're coming to us from your studio, the Atrium, which looks awesome, by the yep. way. Thanks, and so let's, let's talk about your back on, let's get a little drumistic for a second, starting with the equipment. What, you're back on DW drums, you're playing Zildjian cymbals. Yeah. Let's talk about your setup, 
uh, and what you're using and why. Oh boy. Well, it's um, a brand new DW kit, all murdered out. It's uh, like a, a matte black and all black hardware. Um, the sizes are pretty much the sizes that I've, I've always used, 26 inch kick drum. Um, there's some electronic, uh, uh, there's three electronic pads that I use. Um, I also use a triggering system um, because in, uh, not in the studio, <clears throat> but in the uh, live, you know, uh, format where you've got ginormous sound systems and ginormous rooms and you're competing with mad Marshall stacks and bass cabinets, um, I enhance and implement um, the acoustic sound uh, with triggers on each of the uh, acoustic drums. Um, so for instance, on, on a bass drum that you've got sounding super dope, I've added, you know, some sort of like sine wave, uh, super, super low 60, 40 hertz, stuff that doesn't come out of an acoustic drum. It just doesn't. Um, uh, I mean, you can fake it with some EQ, but when you add that, in combination with the, the live microphones, uh, you're, 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 you're giving people bowel movements out in the audience, <laughs> right? Um, and the same, same enhancements with the snare drum. Um, I've, 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 got, I've got something, you know, the, the live drum is tuned high and nice and cracky, uh, but maybe lacking uh, some depth or some size, I'll add that sample uh, to that acoustic drum and the same with the toms and and the toms uh more so because uh in, when we're playing live i have a there's a massive drum monitor system behind me it's basically another pa system um so uh rather than gating the shit out of the toms because you've got open mics here and they're you know uh, and i'm sure every drummer knows what i'm talking about i will just um uh, either internally mic them to keep that that sort of feedback uh, um, from happening, or I will just go with just just some really awesome tom samples so that there's no open mics, so that when I hit it, it's just and there's no open mic, and I can have it as loud as I need it back here um, and have no feedback. So that's kind of. Um, and you've been triggering That's kind of the generic yes well, you've been triggering for a long yeah. time you and you know you were an innovator yeah. on triggering so that you've really had a long time to work it out and get it exactly what works best in large venues it, yeah it, it has been a long time and it's been you know also uh work in progress because some of the first triggers were weren't really that great they were double double and triple triggering and setting the thresholds is a nightmare and um, so it's been a lot of a lot of hard work getting it to to, to where it's at today, um, but uh, it, it 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 certainly takes your drums to a whole other level in the live uh, you know venue um, in the studio. You know it's controlled in here with microphones and stuff, and there's not a lot, there's no bleed and uh, giant PA systems firing. So. So we're all we're all mic'd up over here with the uh, addition of a couple of just pads. I was just kind of playing around with you uh, with some samples and some some fun stuff on. And your bell of bell of your ride symbol is literally a bell. I was <laughs> listening to it sound check and look at that man. That's a freaking bell of a ride. Right, like you've got like nine million Marshall stacks you're competing with, and a ton of Ampeg bass cabinets, a huge sound system, and good luck with the with the, the, the bell that's actually on the ride. Good luck with that cutting through. So the ice bell on top just just blasts right through. Bang, bang, bang. It's it's killer. That's it's my favorite item. I've had that guy for a while. It's the only thing that cuts through. And those and drummers we gotta cut through. You got a lot of speakers and a lot of volume to to compete with <laughs> yeah big time and your sticks i was talking to bob kasha at ahead and he was saying that you have two models of sticks 
and you've been using them for a while and they really kind of had a big impact on how you've been able to approach playing and not having issues with sticks breaking, cymbals breaking, etc. Yeah, I always say this, like a mechanic is only as good as his tools are. So let's say you're working on something, right? And you got out your, I don't know, some sort of quarter inch crescent wrench and, and the thing snaps off, you're like, oh, that's great. Um, and the same with sticks. If you're sitting there playing and your tools are breaking, and how good of a mechanic can you be? You know, you're constantly grabbing for sticks. And, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything bad about wood sticks, and I do use them in the studio sometimes, um, but for, for live, I can count on these guys. I do break the aluminum sticks too. <laughs> um, but they last, um, you know, they last, uh, you know, uh, uh, much longer than wood. And I've got a, 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 a lighter model for the studio and a heavier model for, for live that I can pretty much count on to get me through most of the show. If not, you know, they'll, they'll start to bend before they break. <laughs> Uh, that, I mean, and that's awesome. And those sticks, I I have a pair and, here. And if they are, they are aluminum uh, internally, and there's a hard plastic cover over that. And in the in the handle, there is like a, a vibration dampening system that has these little glass beads in it. So it takes the shock off the wrist, um, which is helpful um, for those guys out there that get the. Uh, I can never get this right. Is it carpal tunnel, tunnel carpal? I, I, I get dyslexic when tunnel. which comes first. It's carpal tunnel. Okay, for so so for guys that that experience that, um, this uh, this definitely helps. It takes a lot of the reverberation and the shock uh, back off your off your hands and wrist. So Those when you were a kid, who influenced you and really got you excited about drumming? Oh man, the hands down guys, John Bonham, um, and that's just, you, know, you can probably hear it in my playing, that that guy, um, you know, most people will talk about how, how heavy his foot was and, uh, and how laid back the snare drum was, but not a lot of people talk about his cymbal placement, you know, he doesn't really play a ton of cymbals, but when he does, he always seems to pick that right moment, you know, with the, and, and, and you can hear it in the studio, they've got the cymbals mic'd and compressed really well, so that when he does hit it, it's And if you were to do, do that the whole time, it would be, uh, you know, it would be messy sounding. But he really had this amazing, ability to pick and choose when those moments were where you wanted that power and that big boosh. That's something that a lot of people don't talk about other than his amazing uh, timing and the, 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 just his groove, man, the way he'd lay back in that big heavy foot and the, and the snare drum way, way on the backside. I mean, that's money. I mean, I, the first time I heard that, I'll never forget it. I was sitting there just, I must have played physical graffiti nine million times both albums just flipping out going like jesus listen to this dude that's one of the, my guys and then later on you know other influences uh tommy aldrich was another one with uh just the showmanship part of his playing you know the stick spinning and the, the ways he you know the way he incorporated some cross cross sort of sticking with the symbols and symbol grabs and all that kind of stuff tommy was another one um and for pure just like a metronome phil rudd dude that guy is like a human drum machine just like and just i mean you could probably clock that guy and i'll bet you it doesn't move you know he's that solid so this different guys for different things but i've been inspired by many drummers and more that I could mention, but we'd be here for f freaking hours. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, those are those are iconic, especially Bonham. I mean, what you know, you never forget the first time you hear John Bonham. 
I know, jeez. And I'm so bummed I never got to see that guy play live. I wish I had the chance. It's been DVDs for me, and that's it, and, and records. But, and, you know, and you know, watching him, you know, film playing, but never really being there, man. I would have, have just killed it and seen him actually play. Well, speaking of live, a lot of questions came in about your setups oh, cool. over the years, both, of course, as, as drumming setups, but the the showmanship aspect of the setups with spinning and f flying over the audience, roller coaster set. <laughs> so people want to know two things about that. Primarily, this was the majority of the questions. One was which one <laughs> you liked the most. And second was how do you prepare to even be able to play under those circumstances and, and pull it off as you did every night, regardless of which tour, because oh. they're all unbelievable. Yeah, you know, I kind of created a monster because every year it's progressively been like, okay, God, now, well, now what am I going to do to top that? And it's all, and even the fans are like, what are you going to do next time? So created this Frankenstein, this crazy monster, but I guess it all started, and I'll just kind of back up here a bit. The reason why I started doing this was because I remember going to see, um, I want to say, I want to say it was Pat Travers or something, um, and Tommy Aldrich was playing, and he was doing a drum solo, and I'm like, dude, this guy is just ripping right now. And I'm watching people go buy a t-shirt or go get a beer or go to the bathroom. And I was like, where, where are you guys going? What are you doing? Dude, he's ripping. And it dawned on me that um, one of the reasons was that people couldn't see what he was doing. You know, we've got a, there's a camera here behind the drums. You can see what your feet and your hands and everything's doing. So what inspired me was the very first, I was like, I need to change the perspective on how the audience sees the drummer. So the very first drum thing that I, drum riser that I built was one that went up, uh, like, you know, uh, up like this, what would that be, vertically? Yeah, vertically, and which gave the audience basically a bird's eye view down they could see it would be like having an overhead camera but i would tilt it up towards them and they're like oh you can see his feet you can see his hand you can see everything that he's doing so I, my point was that that was the whole beginning that started this whole thing it's all it's all tommy aldrich's fault <laughs> um <laughs> and i and from, from then on it was like okay how can now you know um then i, I believe the uh the spinning cage came where it, it rotated forward and reverse sideways um, and out over the audience. And, you know, once the, once you start doing that kind of stuff now, it's on. It's like, okay, God, I want to build a, uh, uh, you know, I want to fly from one kit to another. Uh, that was on the Carnival of Sins tour. Uh, Dr. Feelgood, I wanted to, I wanted, uh, again, I always think about the fans, like what would they want to see? And with the Dr. Fielded one, I wanted to, the, I wanted the person in the very back, we call it the Stevie Wonder section where you can't see anything. Um, and everybody's this big uh, on stage. I wanted to bring the drums from the stage to the very back of the arena. So that those people in the very back of the arena all of a sudden had a front row ticket. And so that's sort of been my thing is like how do i how do i involve the audience instead of the drummer just sitting there doing a drum solo which is cool too and i'm not discounting that by no means that's totally cool but i just wanted to take it to another level and then once you start once you get onto that level it was like okay let's build let's do a let's do a, an indoor roller coaster the 360 was next then the Crucifly, which was the 200 and something foot roller coaster that's 60, 70 feet in the air that I wanted to, I was like, I, this is next. It's a roller coaster. No one's ever done this shit. And 
that being said, this is all designed like, I don't know, we were all sitting around having drinks and on a cocktail napkin. Uh, there was a few of us drawing and all of a sudden it turns into a, in a, a reality. Now the schematics are being built and the things getting planned and you're seeing this all, you know, on, on, on paper. So it's getting built and I can't even tell you how horrified I was when I got there for uh, production rehearsals and it's set up. I walk into the arena and I look up, I keep looking up and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I got to do this every night. I'm terrified. So I go, so I, I, I get in it, go for a, for a test drive. Uh, I'm up at, the, at, it, at its peak where it first goes up and then it drop the first drop. I just said, stop right here. Flip me upside down uh, or, or kind of kind of sideways. And I just dropped a drumstick and it was like, Dink, 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 dink on the on the arena floor. I was like, dude, this is so like I could actually die up here if something goes south, right? <laughs> but I'm like, this is worth it. This is totally worth it. Um, but so anyway, that's sort of the I, I guess. Sorry for the long version, but that's sort of the evolution of that and my reasons for it. You know, I don't know if I've ever really got a chance to explain that to people. No, that was awesome. And then how, so then in that moment, now the roller coaster with you're dropping the stick and you're, and it's scary as, as anybody can imagine. That's already after yeah. you've already been spun upside down. You've done all of these incredible things over the years. So what's the, how does the preparation go and how does it change as the, as the performance gets more and more elaborate in the air and scarier? What do you do to, is there something you can do to actually prepare for something like that? I wish I could say there was, and unfortunately with productions that big, I don't think I've ever had a, a time where I've had time to like pr practice and prepare and work with it. It's always been maybe an hour or two before the doors are opening at the first show where I'm getting a chance to like see what this thing can do, what I can do, what I can, my limitations, what I can and can't do. I've never really like, I've never had sat there with a, you know, with a, uh, a drum set up and had a week to, to mess with it. And so it just sort of progressively gets better because I start to figure out what the fuck's going on and what I can do and what I can't do. But I've never had a chance to prepare other than just you know you know I guess just personally just being in shape to play and and, and playing a lot but uh, as far as that there's really no preparation for that I miss I mean I guess you could you know, I, I don't know go to NASA and <laughs> go, <laughs> and go, and go well, that, that NASA for might be next year <laughs> what's that I said NASA might be the next year's stadium uh, event for you guys. Who knows what's it next? Could go to space. Be careful what you wish for, especially with me. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, it's, it, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him, bro. It was rad while it lasted. <laughs> so what are some of your favorite grooves to play? We got a lot of people emailed about Dr. Feelgood. So I know they want to hear that if you're up for playing it. Uh, but just your favorite grooves, what you really like playing. Oh, Ben, you know, I, I like the simpler, I like the simpler stuff. I mean, everything from Wild Side to Feel Good, uh, Shout at the Devil. Um, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big, I'm a groove guy, you know, like, uh, and some of the faster stuff I dig too, but um, my preference is, this stuff that has a big fat groove um that's 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 pretty much that's pretty much my vibe i, I you know it's, it's that kind of bottom sounding stuff that i i just love that shit love it are you up for playing feel good right now you want to just play a little of that groove sure, we, can, grooves? We, we can bash it. yeah Listen. why not
<laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So on the new album, you actually programmed everything, right? You, did, did you play anything on the album or is it all programmed? Um, I'm trying to think, did I play? Most of the stuff is programmed. Um, you know, uh, I have a, an enormous sample bank of my own sounds um, and a bunch of other sounds, uh, a bunch of hybrid stuff. Um, there's a, there's definitely a lot of programming, um, especially with, uh, you'll, you'll hear on the record, it's, 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 you know, eclectically, uh, genre-wise all over the place, so not necessarily, uh, acoustic drums work in those, some of those genres. I mean, you wouldn't play an acoustic drum kit on a song like Tops. That was built... Uh, you know, I programmed that, and there's nothing in that song other than I made what I wanted. To, I made a, a melody out of the 808s. Boom, ba -ka boom, da -um, boom, 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 ba -ka boom, ba -um, boom, boom. So uh, you can't play that on a drum set. Um, so I programmed that, and the beats, beats are sort of your straight ahead kind of a dance groove. Um, the heavy track, Knock Me Down, that's that's also programmed, but with live drums. Um, and it's also got sort of a, uh, like a, kind of a rap rock, rap rock uh, breakdown, which I wanted to change the color uh, of the breakdown section, where Kilvane raps in like 30 second notes, the fastest shit I've ever heard in my life. Um, but I wanted to color change it. I didn't want big drums in that section. I wanted the drums to be smaller and, and more lo-fi, you know, like, uh, so I, I'm always experimenting with the, uh, the texture, the sound, uh, you know, the sonics of it, you know, when I want, when I want to need it big and want it big, um, I'm able to, I'm able to have, you know, select and use sounds that are just perfect for these sections of music that I'm creating. Um, and I, I, I think there's, there's I, I, I'm pretty sure there's some, some drum, drum overdub parts in some sections, but, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of programming, pro, programming also, yeah. And the thing is, when, when we look at your, your career of between Methods of Mayhem, your, all your solo projects, your special appearances, of course, crew, it's there's it's just as significant with the electronic side as it is with the acoustic side so when did the, i mean you think of bonham and how much it affected your acoustic playing and so then when did the electronics just kind of come into your universe as something that you were like wow this is really awesome and uh, you know i got a lot of ideas of how to use this because that was really the origin of then how far you've taken it but how did that start um, that started, oh man, that start. <laughs> this is crazy, this is going back. Um, once you realize the power of computers, um, this was in, man, when did I, I started writing Wild Side, and I, could, I had a Mac 2CI, do you remember what those were? I do, I, I do, I'm I remember them the well, of course, with digital, okay. perfor with Performer, or Vision, or... Whatever, you know, back then, uh, the jam, the jam box. Dude, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I had performer and I, and, uh, I, I, I was playing guitar, singing, just do, demoing up what would become wild side. And I wanted a, I wanted a guitar chug going, right? So, and rather than play that, I, I really wanted it rigid. So I just took like a chunk going down, chunk, and then a chunk going up, chunk. And I programmed it going, chug, 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 and got it sounding mechanical. And, and, and as you're working and learning this technology, I'm, I'm starting to realize the potential. I'm like, oh my God, you can do that? You can do that? You can do that too? Are you crazy? whoa like just mind mind blow shit and now 
I mean, we've gone, you know how far we've gone since, since then. For a guy like me to know that anything is fucking possible, it's, it's frightening, man. I'm like, I never leave the studio. And every day something new comes out. There's new technology to learn, whether it's you know, hardware or software, uh, you name it. And, um, and you uh, embrace I, it. I'm all, I, I embrace the hell out of it, and I'm always learning new things, and I'm trying to bring new sounds and, and turning on. And that's why I've injected that kind of stuff in the Motley shows. I'm trying to turn on some people that may or may not uh, like that or have, or have experienced it. I remember going, we were playing on a festival. Motley was on a festival. It was in Europe. And we had played right before, uh, are you familiar with uh, The Prodigy? Yes. The Prodigy? Okay. This is the first time I had ever experienced this. We got done playing. I think Smashing Pumpkins were on the bill as well. Prodigy comes on. And they opened their show with, I believe it was Smack My Bitch Up. And, dude, I looked out and saw like 60,000, 70,000 people losing their minds to these big 808 drops. It was like... It almost looked like those, you know, sub sub bass frequencies were pushing the crowd. And at that moment, I thought, I just, I just realized, I'm like, this, this is, uh, this is sound waves. This is moving people. It's physically moving your body. And I just realized the power of that. And then. So I, in, in Motley, I've tried to, so you have to be careful because people expect a certain thing with Motley. So I've had to be careful to kind of slowly interject that. And so while we play live, that's where I've been adding some electronics and some of those sub frequencies that you wouldn't hear at a normal rock show because it doesn't exist. I see. Awesome. That, awesome. that explains some of that. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And that's the, that's what's so great about how you have taken electronics and how you've, in your vision, you've kind of uh, used those tools you talk about, like as far as, as you can take them, because you're implementing them in, in the rock world where they have the most impact. You're implementing them in the electronic world where they have the most impact, but completely different from how they do it in the, in the rock world. And it's just, it's just all about taking the tools and going, Hey, this is my idea. And I'm going to use the hell out of these tools to capture that. Yeah, absolutely. And use it, it you know, it, my way, you know, where I see it fit and where I can make it work uh, in maybe, you know, a genre where it's not, it hasn't been done before. I'm, I'm into that never been done before kind of stuff too. <laughs> and so speaking of never been done before with all the kits you've had and the tours, a lot of people asking, uh, what is your, if you had to pick one, what's your favorite and why? What's my favorite what? Your favorite tour drum kit and, uh, and the, th you know, if you, it, and, and not just uh, the drums themselves, but like the whole, your experience drumming live on a specific tour, all things considered with the, the risers and, you know, everything you've done each tour. Yeah. What's your favorite if you have one? It would probably be the, the final tour because the roller coaster really was, that's been a long time dream. I've, I've, I mean, years ago, I'm like, man, one day I'm going to build a roller coaster. I know it. I just, I have to do it. So for, for you know, that tour had a lot of meaning. It was like, okay, you know, we're going to go out on top. We could probably keep doing this for a long time. We're gonna just gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Mic drop. Poof, peace. We out. And um, that was we we put everything into that. Um, into you know having people walk away going that was an insane 32, 33 years. And I do what I just saw in there was ridiculous. And so for me that was uh, fun on a and emotional on a whole bunch of different levels. You know, it's here we had it's like we done it all like what there what else is there to do um at this point you know and, that, and that's a really good feeling knowing that you've pretty much done it all uh i've pretty you know other other other, other than shoot myself out of a fucking cannon i don't know what else there is <laughs> uh-oh don't get any ideas it's a stadium tour i know i know 
<laughs> no, I know. Trust me. I'm already on that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, double bass drumming. You have a huge amount of fans of your double bass drumming uh, right out of the get go when the world first saw the band uh, on video and you're doing, you know, th these, these double bass grooves. W what's anything specific to work on your double bass drumming or at least in the early days when you were, when you were still getting it all, you know, to where it is now? Yeah. Um, I mean, Jesus, that's just like practice. Um, and it's kind of, uh, you know, that, that's something, I mean, it's powerful, obviously. Um, and eventually I got away from the double, the two bass drums and I use a, a double pedal on one bass drum. I just kind of wanted to get away from that sort of generic to me. Uh, it, just, it just seemed like everybody had that set up and I was like, I just want a single kick you know, Bonham style, but with two pedals so I can do what I need to do on, on, uh, on one bass drum. Um, that's just like a, a shitload of practice and then implementing, uh, you know, whatever kind of, whatever kind of double kind of beats or whatever you're doing with your main foot, incorporating the left foot in between them, you know, um, I don't know, there's all kinds of, you know, there's guys out there that are freaking machines you know, the brrrr, and you're like whoa dude <laughs> i mean i'm not that that's not my forte it's not my thing but uh i i do love the power of that sort of you know 16th note you know that that moves people um but i don't have i don't have any sort of regimented practice or anything like that i just kind of play uh and, and play and not play where it's necessary because there's nothing worse than overplaying. It's like, dude, this section doesn't need that, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, that's totally, that's totally. a big one. I think that's, that's just a discipline thing, you know, where uh, a lot of younger guys just smash the whole time and you're like, bro, not yet, not yet. <laughs> right. So, and, and that's something that is exemplified as, as you know, in all of your playing, whether you're programming or whether you're playing live, you know, it's all about, the, the perfect kind of moment of, you know, when, when something needs to be played so that it feels the, the, the heaviest, you know, like it makes the most emotional statement really. Yes. Instead of them being drums, I treat them like, like uh, an instrument, you know, well, it is an instrument, but I'm saying like, you know, a guitar or piano, like, um, how do I explain this? You know, there's, there's times for it to explode and there's times for it to just, just hold down the fort, you know? Um, and that's just, that's just, that just takes time and just a lot of a feel and, and s sensibility of when and where to push it and, and pull it. Well, and that's, and that's the thing. And you, and you're playing, I mean, you have these incredible drum solos, but then, the rest of the time when the band needs you to just be the backbone and keep everything rocking and, and moving, you know, you're right there yeah. for that too. And that's very well, yeah. you know, articulated is that's your philosophy is just take each moment. That's the most musically fitting to the max is what really what I'm hearing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we, we love it, Tommy. Um, I, I want to say uh, thank, thank you again for, for taking the time uh, for answering so many questions that we've been getting uh, both live and I love it, man. well, we love you. Your fans love you. Modern drummer loves you. And uh, if you want <laughs> to play a little something for the outro, uh, since you know, your setup's there and I know everybody wants to hear your groove and jam and, and thank you again. Thanks for having me, man. It's really cool. I, I don't think I've ever done one of these it's pretty fun pretty cool um i hope everybody had a good time hanging out and i uh, hope i answered everyone's questions i don't know hopefully we got them <laughs> we got tons yeah. of them man and thank you again it, it was awesome yeah but, all right all right what do we got here let's have to get some fun shit to, to 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 get going i don't know we'll see what we got